Greetings everybody, welcome to the, I believe it's the third, maybe it's the fourth episode of Retrospective Analysis. Um, this time around it's a ranked game versus Way, if that's how it's supposed to be pronounced, I have no idea. It is also, it is also he's also known as Fadeway, um, pretty much only plays US of A in ranked as far as I know. I'm playing as how not to rip the skin. And... I think this episode is a bit more interesting, or will I hope to it to be um, a bit more interesting, just because I did some major fuck-ups in this game, I did not really play very well. And just me trying to recover from those positions, um, I hope to be fairly interesting. Um, I'm playing with a, I guess you could say, revised Yorgo deck. I'll go into detail. Um, during the game, but um, since I did not start from the recording from the beginning, because I originally didn't intend to do, so I am. Um, whoa! I went over the deployment afterwards. So, for the left, we have. I mean, that's pretty unnecessary. Um, to MX sense, Bab T20 with. Commandos Para and a squad of reservists. One major change in my deck. Um, because I had problems dealing with um, infantry grinds. So what I'm trying out here is... Um, I switched out, I took out the Marder 2 with Panzergrunts 90. Actually, no. The new infantry tab is Rima 85 in the Panther. Which is new, Leech 90 in the Vab T2013, which is uh, which I always had. A card of Panzer Grenadier 90 in the M113. A card of Reservists. And a card of Milan 3 in the VAB instead, since I have the Panther with the Rima. Now we have this group here going to the left of Bravo for like this area here. Uh, I'm still trying to get used to this pen thing. So sorry for that. We have this group here consisting of a recon squad, Milan 3, two reservists, four reservists, and a pentagram squad. Reservists basically playing meat shield for the MX 13s and a pentagram. Going for. Once I zoom out. Going for basically this area here, million three in here, the other million three from the left part is supposed to get into here. Also have a tiger, as you might see. And I also have a mortar with a Leclerc, and for the right side, we might five for this town, MX10, I think I put it in here or something. And the gazelle cannon just to suicide into this area, it doesn't matter where it dies, it's just supposed to. Just supposed to scout where the enemy is pushing, but you probably already know this by now. You also might notice I have another change. Um, I used to run with um, two cards of the drugs, but since I'm also running the M270 LRM, the French heavy MLRS system, you can see also the Clear and HS30 mortar. Since I'm running in the heavy MLRS system, um, I tried to change out uh, to use a fob instead, also since the tiger is fairly supply heavy. Now, very unfortunate what you can see here is that uh, VAB, you know, that this group of units, which is supposed to go in here, drove down this road here and wants to drive like this. Even though I, w I would have liked them to drive around like this way. Oh, isn't this beautiful? Um, in order to avoid possible incoming fire here. Which is very, very unfortunate that I drove this way. Smoking in this area for my Leclerc. In case um, there's a longbow or a very early anti tank plane. Tiger gets a bit too deep in here. Um, especially when the distance between the two spawns is fairly low and there are a lot of uh, wide front to cover. Um, at least for me, it happens often that um, some units drive too far because I'm still properly microing the other units like the individual units where they have to go and stuff. 
So that's why I pretty much forgot about the tiger. And yeah, as you can see, I'm immediately pulling it back. But as you can see, I have the unit ident identification window open. I don't spot a chaparral, so I am thinking that I'm in the clear, but as he, uh, you might have seen the Bradley. Hang on, let me revert this a bit. Watch out for like this area. You will see suddenly a unit popping up with a, with the aim circle of it uh, appearing uh, on top of the label and at the same time. Uh, right now, here you can see there's two new unidentified units popping right where the Bradleys are and this aiming circle here, which means, okay, there were man pets in those Bradleys, which is why I'm immediately telling the tiger to move back. Even though I haven't even fully identified a unit yet. But... Oh, the tiger actually makes it out alive. I remembered it wrong. Yeah, again, due to the tiger micro, these units here get a bit too far in. It's not too bad in hindsight, but uh, as I managed to take out the rangers, which is always good. Um, but yeah, Chaparral is fairly far in the back, so no threat to the Tiger. And having a FOB, while it definitely hurts at the start, in these situations it's really nice to have because I don't have to bother with micro of uh, supply trucks and all that. Also here, I think we both fucked up micro. I forgot to move the Panthers at uh, the Rima up. And I believe the Hummies and the other transport there were not empty, considering that my Rima 5 Yep, gets veteran when it kills the V150, which only should happen if um, there were infantry in there. Now, next situation. That was also a bit unfortunate. These reservists, I mean, if they died, that's whatever. They're supposed to take fire. Uh, what's very unfortunate here, I unloaded the Milan F3 and Leech 90 at the same time. Uh, Milan 3 obviously only 2 HP, because I unloaded them because of the M1 IPs firing in. But the Legion 90 now get into the building, and as soon as a unit enters a building, there's a small cooldown. I don't know, it's like five, six, seven seconds before they can leave the building. Which means that unfortunately, these Milan 3 will die. Because I can't get them into this building. Yep, there they are. And now the Legion 90 finally leave the building. Unfortunate, but. Happens. Um, he also immediately kept his two pointer. But, I mean, he got like a couple of points, but I also immediately buy a second CV. Not too big of a deal. I tried to model his chaparral. Because chaparrals are not very nice to helicopters. And I have a tiger in my deck. Or here right at the start. Milan F3 and uh, Leclerc firing at the M1 IPs. Nice smoke micro by him. They're very, very durable, these M1 IPs, for their price. I'm also baiting my fire with the uh, with other units while he was reversing the M1 IP so that the clear I think does not automatically retarget the M1 IPs if I'm correct. Oh, actually did probably killed something right before these pop back up. Because the units do not change um their focus of fire. Which means if the Leclerc is shooting at an infantry squad and does not it does not get killed immediately or and he constantly keeps line of sight. If at the same time a new target appears, um, the unit at the Leclerc will not suddenly shoot at a tank, unless you tell it to do so. Or you lose line of sight to the infantry tab, uh, squad, or it dies, of course. But I think you get the point. Or the Panther, very, very useful to have, especially when you have a FOB, um, because rocket pods over time can be very supply intensive. And, but they can also be a very nice uh, fire support unit. However, you have to be careful with uh, if the uh, opponent plays decks like US or especially Eurocore or, well, nobody plays it, Red Dragon or I guess Mixed Red 4, Unspec or Motorized. Because HQ7s, Chaparrals just one shot them over very long range. And that is very, very unfortunate if that happens. Because they're pretty expensive and generally you want them to. At least, at the very, very least, empty their first salvo they come with. And ideally, on average, you want them to be able to do two full salvos or two full runs, I guess you could say. Or the die Harrier coming in. Not a big problem when you have smoke cover because those are semi active missiles. So, yeah. As you can see here, the clerk getting shot at. 
I'm not noticing it because I'm busy with <laughs> saving my Crotal. Gets down to 6 HP the Lickler. And that is more or less the initial engagement. The Light Rifleman should not have a big problem against... Uh, should have a big problem against Panzergrenz because they have no CQC MG. So I, I get... here. Yeah, actually he got into CQC with me, which is not the best idea, but whatever. The DAP should again... Or not again, but should not be a huge problem. Same why a Panther wouldn't be. 6 HP gets one shot by uh, Crotal. Um, I'm trying to keep the Leclerc in smoke here. I think it would be a one shot up front even because it's down to 5 HP. And unfortunately, there are these Rangers. And I have no rifle squad down there. The Leclerc is just in smoke cover. But the Harrier, unfortunately, takes out my Tiger. 750 kilometers per hour. Sidewinders, decent gun on vet on elite. It's pretty much guaranteed kill. Rangers unfortunately spot the Milan. Uh, Leclerc unfortunately shoots at the M113s instead of the M1 IP. I think it lost line of sight for a second there. Yeah, as you saw, it lost for a second line of sight on the M1 IP after the first shot and then retargeted at the M113 just when the M1 IP got into line of sight again. Um, if that hadn't happened, I would have been able to kill the M1 IP. Very, very unfortunate. And here something happened that is very awkward. The Leclerc is near the town. I'm telling it to reverse into this area. Um, yeah. There comes another area. But in this situation, the town seems to be very, very nice because um, if you're semi-active plane, if you right-click with a semi-active plane on a unit and it's like just a couple of seconds before it can fire the ADGM and you get like for just for a split second or so behind buildings and the opponent loses lose line of sight with the plane or at all and uh, very often some active planes or maybe even fire and forget planes but planes in general tend to bug a bit out I guess you could say and just decide to turn around for another run if uh, instead of engaging it so that was very very fortunate here for me I also bought a Roland earlier for here. And yep, angle is too steep for the Harrier and the Crotal kills it, finishes it off brother, which is very, very fortunate. Like, uh, so, uh, excuse me, um, unfortunately, a Tiger died, so I'm buying the second one. Maybe I should honestly down the Tiger, but you will see. Crotal unfortunately missed the shot on the dab, as you might have seen this explosion there. Dab, very, very dangerous. One of the few, um, and here also stingers in there. I, I'm not sure if I realized that those are the stingers from earlier, or whether I think that that's the chap we're shooting. Um, yeah, shouldn't, shouldn't, really shouldn't have lost these Panthers. Um, again, this is like the first time I think I'm playing with this infantry tab. So, I definitely have to l still learn quite a bit. Uh, like I said, the DAP is one of the few anti-air helicopters that I believe is... No, no, that's the one wrong way to put, to put it. It's one of the few anti-air helicopters that is more than just a one-trick pony, like Gazelle Celtics, TY-90s, um, the German bow, but that's less of an issue because it's cheap. But um, the DAP is one of the units that is... Useful outside of just killing helicopters, maybe planes when you're in a dire situation. Also, I'm really trying hard here to keep my low HP Panzergrenz um, alive because, yeah, it was a bit too late, unfortunately. Because um, they are my most damage dealers when it comes to infantry killing other infantry. And I don't have something like, you know, 15 or 20 point infantry squads that um, I can get for killing infantry and possible. Meat shields like I have with let's say Motschutz and Yagari 90 or pre nerf Jäger stuff like that or even just riflemen in M113s but the base chasseur are just too garbage. I tried base chasseur in both the MXMP and the AMX 13 but SMGs on line infantry is just so terrible. 
Tiger also very supply intensive because it has low ammunition count on every uh, on every weapon, which is kind of awkward sometimes. But the stealth on it is just so ridiculous. This stealth on helicopters is ridiculous, and the Tiger has fucking good stealth. Not even just medium like the KA-52. It has fucking good stealth. Buying a Crotal for the ride because Fateway likes to use a good amount of helicopters. Um, tries to do weird stuff like starting with a longbow, or as you might 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 have seen. Also using little birds, which have an incredible rate of fire on their grenade launchers. Um, now we're just basically both looking our wounds, I guess you could say. Having medium three in the VAB, also I found out in this game. Well, not found out, but um, are very, very, very nice if you want to reinforce these kind of sectors. And I think I'm I'm really happy in general with this new. Infantry tab, although I still have to play against a deck where I have to play against um, or fight against uh, efficient infantry, let's say you get an ID, Mortrits, and Proletary, Mirai, Savannah, stuff like that. Because USA is not really the best when it comes to infantry versus infantry fights. Okay, I'm just gonna skip ahead a bit here. Harry again, probably coming for the tiger. I also told the tiger to land. Tiger has um, is only medium size, and size basically determines. Or well, it I'm not sure if size directly affects it or if it's just that um, Eugen gave every size the same stats when it comes to accelerating or decelerating. So only whether it correlates or actually affects the stats, I don't know. But uh, helicopters with medium size. Accelerate and decelerate faster than helicopters with big size or very big same goes for small and very small They're the faster to accelerate and decelerate and I believe it also affects the landing speed So the landing speed of the tiger is fairly fast, which is also why I managed to evade this area I believe the Apache and the longbow are also medium if I'm not wrong, but I'm not quite sure um, I even get uh, hit on with the stinger which is very nice, so at the very least I won't see that area in a while. And it's the second area, so since I killed the first one already, or this is still the first one and then killed the second one, whatever. I'm just complaining about the lag. Um, here I'm just trying to do a small push here, because I know he has all this, his fighting units in... Oh, there we go. In this area, I haven't seen really any tanks or anything along those lines here. Or here, so I think that in this forest here, I don't think there's too much. Maybe just a couple of infantry squads, and even if there should be heavy vehicles, I have one squad of Pentagrams 90 behind that. So yeah, and I'm also it's also kind of an experiment just to test out how it works using the reservists, the meat shields, and Pentagrams behind that. Also having fob sometimes allows you to just resupply mortars, especially on this map can be nice because even from from the fob I can uh, mortar the front line so I don't have to move it up very much. Yeah, um, soon you will be able to see my first big fuck up in this, although I guess the first fuck up was, I guess, the tiger at the start, and I wasn't punished for that, even though I should have been. And as you see, oh no, I'm actually smoking my liqueur here. But I'm moving up my liqueur, however, I'm not making a new smoke wall. Kill one of the M1IPs, which is very nice, because now the VAB T20 can fairly um, easily kill those rangers. But I'm moving up my Leclerc, I'm not putting up a new smoke wall further to the front line. Oh, I'm actually reversing it. Well, I mean, as you might have guessed, the first fuck up involves me losing the Leclerc. The little birds, uh, the little birds, the little birds opening fire on the Leech 90 and they have an amazing DPS versus infantry. They are just very squishy and have, have low range, but one of these units said, um, if you get them into range, they can just do amazing amount of damage, similarly to the... The Anzac uh, Bushmasters, no, push rangers with the heat rocket pots. Getting them into range is hard, but yeah. And here you can see the Clare is... Uh, there we go. It's up here. I just gave an order to put a smoke wall here, I believe. But this is pretty much too late and there comes the Nighthawk. 
rip. Yeah, that was uh, the first big fuck up. And now bought an LRM. Again, spoiler, it doesn't really do much on this map. Not sure why I've been bought it. I think I only bought it because I had the points. I didn't know what to buy, really. As stupid as it sounds. Um, on this map and also on Motherfight, not really that useful most of the time. I think if I if I was pushing the two pointer or something, or maybe the middle forest or the right side, it would have been better. But around Bravo, it's really not that great with the open cover and um, just a fairly wide front line. But yeah, this this right now mostly consists of small skirmishes. Trying to do something with my tiger, but I believe. Also, you can see these Legion 90 are spotted by the Ranger squad in that building, and a little bird is shooting at it. And there's a Chaparral. And one hit. Two hits. Last tiger lost. And that's why you have to be very, very careful with a tiger micro. A tiger can be very annoying, especially on maps like these, where which are very open and have a wide front line, but. Yeah, they can also be very, very easily lost. Buying into a 5 now. Um, I switched to the Leopard 2 f4 for the Leopard 2 to have a medium tank. I probably should have bought just two Leopard 2s instead, which should, on nearly all ranges, ranges outclass the M1 IP, I believe. M1 IP has 17 armor, 15 IP, but one range less. So, actually they are more or less the same, um, because the Leopard 2 can't shoot at the M1 IP at max range, because it only has 16 AP, so it has to get into one, uh, 2100 meter range. So they can shoot at them each other at the same time, and effectively deal one damage to each other. Now, as you, as you saw here, I wasn't really sure what to do with my um, LRM. Also move to Roland up a bit because I I want to kill the Nighthawk. And Nighthawk is a pain in the ass. And it's fairly rare that you kill it with ASFs unless you have them already circling. And when I be shooting at the Pantagrants, I'm not managing to get a second shot off, so I'm retreating as well and get the reservists up. I have pretty good control over Bravo, but I don't have any tanks there. Although I'm just moving up my 205. Buying out the Panther to get some fast infantry and also some good fire support. I shot a few rounds near where the where I anticipated the Chaparral here. And I believe I don't kill anything with my LRM. Maybe I should have just gone with the full salvo, but Yeah, like I said, it wasn't really worth buying on this map. M103 is now overwhelming the Pentagrams together with the M1 IP. No chance. Trying to get my Milan 3 in here so I can hopefully shoot at some stuff in here. Maybe even get a shot off on the M1 IP should it arrive here or here without hopefully getting spotted. I'm buying level 2 now. More Pentagrams. Moving back my Roland again because if the M1 IP. Uh, shows up there might not end very well for the Roland. With my level 5 again, already made a smoke cloud to hopefully not lose it to another Nighthawk. I noticed that also that I don't have any optics here, which is not too big of a deal, but um, especially like in these bushes, there could be some. Um, M1 IP, some Bradleys, stuff like that, you name it. So yeah, and now I decided to pull my Milan back in, in case the M1 IP uh, shows up there. Plane coming in, I don't quite notice it immediately, now I do again the Harrier, so I'm reducing my Leopard to a 5 into the smoke. Should be safe. Also, whenever I see a plane, I'm al also always checking whether something else might be spotted. Because sometimes, even though, I mean, obviously it might be the level 205 he's, he wants to go for, but sometimes um, that can just be a coincidence. 
So always check whether something is spotted. Something got killed, like the weasel here, if it got killed. If I lost my Rima 85 here and just didn't notice. Whenever you see a plane incoming, it's a good idea, unless it's an ASF maybe, it's a good idea to just zoom out and see whether you may have missed something sticking around or something dying. dying. Oh, there's another coming in again, and I believe... I also, as you might have seen here, hang on. I have the Roland 3 in this little bush near the buildings. And... You see the Roland 3? As you can see, it has line of sight. The, um, the line is not, you know, you know what I mean. You can see it has line of sight and is firing. But now, that's, that's a big mistake I made here. You can see it has no line of sight anymore because of the buildings here. So the missile... Hang on. This little missile here is gonna miss. Even though it could have hit, most likely would have hit since Nighthawk has no ECM. Nighthawk killed the Panther here with my, I know, my Rima 85 here. The Panther just died to the Chaparral. Not too big of a loss, but then, then again, it was free for him. I didn't even damage his Nighthawk, which is bad. Which is also, again, why I decided to move my Roland up here. Minion 3 unfortunately misses the ACAP, but the ACAP luckily doesn't shoot at the Minion 3. I have my Leopard 205 out in the open, but the Harrier is still circling. And I'm moving at my Leopard 205. Yep. That was just bad again. Very, very bad play by me. Um, And I don't even get to kill the Harrier. Crital crit crits, the Harrier only deals 9 damage because it only has 6 H HE and the Harrier gets out alive. Harrier and Nighthawk both still alive. Harrier badly damaged, so at least I won't see that for a while, but yeah, now I'm not in a very great position. He's attacking with a lot of fire support, a lot of infantry. I've only like one squad of reserves, squad of pentagons, one vehicle to, to defend, and the million three once it gets into the building. Each knight here should have pulled that back way early though, because I knew there were still rangers in there, and there were only one HP, so... Unnecessary that I'm losing them now. Never two should those do some nice work here. Um, Commander's power to get some. Hang on, I may have missed that in the game, but did the Legion ninety just kill those eight HP Rangers because those were out in the open? I think they might have because I just saw them upvetting. Anyways. Um, Minion 3 though doing a really nice job, having a Minion 3 or any decent long range ATGM, which means no dragons or metas, um, having just a gem in the town, as you probably are aware of, but I'm just naming it, it's just so incredibly helpful. Minion 3 definitely are very good ones, but I think especially spikes would be immense, immense here. Nato coming in again, the Roland turning on now. But I believe I don't kill it. Yeah, only got one one hit on it. Um, I be did I already spot the Patriot? I'm not sure. At some point he's be uh, by the Patriot, and now, which is a bit too late, I decide to smoke this so his fire support can't shoot at the, uh, these long ranges anymore. We done three out of ammunition. And yeah, buy some another leopard too. Medium tanks are pretty good because um, it's not as big of a deal, obviously, if you lose them. Prima, these panthers will be really nice for cleaning out these riflemen in the town. Leopard two. Not sure what he's shooting at. I'm trying to go for the chaparral with my LRM because if I can kill the chaparral, the uh, panthers will have much much easier time. Also buying more reserves. Reser when you have reserves, buying reserves is pretty much never wrong. Also doing, um, being very, very supply uh, fob heavy, I guess you could say, which is always good. If you buy a fob and you drain it quite a bit, then that's actually like a really good sign because then the fob was worth it and yeah. So yeah, if you if you um, start in one versus ones with the fob and you never or only very, very rarely um, drain it or get it empty or anything, then it's usually a sign that it is not worth it. 
Total kills the dab, always nice. Dab again, very nice fire support helicopter. It takes a long time. It doesn't have like rocket pots, of course, so it, the range is not very, not very great. And it also takes a long time to line up its guns, but once it shoots, it has incredible DPS. Raven coming in, I did not expect that. Luckily, misses the first shot. I try to um, move and, of course, turn off the Ronin at the same time. So if the second missile got out, it hopefully misses, but I was too slow. Yeah, now I'm pretty much defenseless here again, and he's just rolling over my units with all his fire support. At least I'm still taking with a plus one, so that's nice. Aiming stand from the right side, also doing some nice fire support. And also, now um, I realize I probably should have tried to move these three up here after I killed his two squads right at the start, but yeah, hindsight is 20-20. Try to get a melee into the building before it gets killed and hopefully get the M1 IP. Also banging KDL, yes, um, because the Nighthawk should appear fairly soon again. And fire and forget missiles on planes is one of the best things against Nighthawks, especially if uh, they are on high vet. Try to get out the commander's power alive again. I wanna, I just wanna try to keep preserve the more expensive infantry because I just have the supply as well. Um, yeah, I think not too much happening here. Bring up the Rima. Oh, that's a very, oh, that. Minion 3 shooting here. I think it misses. Rima 85. Ah, I, I gave it an attack order on the M1 IP. So once the M1 IP got out of range, the Rima got uh, moved out and I was too late with uh, the order to get into the other building. Minion 3 out of ammunition. Ah, as you might have, as you might um, think by now, yes, the M1 IP gets out alive. Shoots on the M1 on 3 because it lost line of sight on the M1 IP. I move up the Rima, but again, there's this cooldown. Misses the shot. It's down to 4 HP, it would be a kill. Misses the second shot. And misses the third shot. This was just so annoying. Nighthawk kills the Rima. I tried to get a kill on the Nighthawk, but the first missile misses, and that's when I knew. Alright, the Nighthawk is gonna get that alive because it already evac'd, uh, or it evac'd, so the third missile won't hit, and not even the second one hits, so. Again, very unfortunate. Didn't really do much, only killed like a half that Rima squad, but still annoying. Also, now my opponent knows, although he probably knew it already, that I have an ASF, which is also valuable information for him, which means not good. I get this hemmed for free, which is nice, and also notifies me that there is no infantry left in that area. I buy two more Leopard 2s and cancel them. <laughs> uh, and it's <laughs> decided to buy one Leopard 2. And yeah, as it turns out, these rocket helos are very annoying to him, which is just because the Shepard is fairly slow and a bit clunky. Um, I think it has like only one front arm or something. It is, like I said, slow, it is tracked. Brutal is just a lot more, um, how do I put it, um, flexible. And Shepard is also more expensive, so. Yeah. Basically the thing is, Due to the open field here, the chapel being slow and clunky, if I have my rocket pod helicopters in here, just only shooting at the stuff that might be in the town, not more, they're fairly often fairly safe. Now if I try to kill stuff in here with my rocket pods, um, it only really works if the opponent has only one or two AA pieces that um, are fairly easy to spot once they fire, and I over overwhelm him with the rocket pod helos and try to kill his AA first, but other than that, not really possible. Leopard 2 also really nice against his things. I buy Rafa just because I just I want to kill that Harrier. Um and Rafa just has the highest chance, of course. And of course gets hit by the Patriot. Patriot fairly close to the front line. And doesn't kill my Rafa luckily. I'm shooting at it with a 
HS, HS30 and the MLRS. So no more inter-tank um, ATGM planes anymore. Also nice uh, longbow, which is very, very dangerous. Although I have Crotals, and Crotals are fairly good. And I don't have a lot of tanks. I have like Leopard 2 here and there, nothing major. Again, only using half the salvo of the LRM, which again, in hindsight, might have not been the best idea, but... Oh well. I think in my head I'm using half salvos because it works so well on the Eurogun, but the Eurogun also has four more rounds in its burst. Or magazine, whatever you want to call it. It has four more tubes. <laughs> Trying to dive the longbow with my KWS. Also, because I should, I'm shooting at the Patriot with my LRM, so it's pretty much nearly guaranteed to be at least panicked, as you can see. Uh, yeah, there's this little symbol indicating that it's panicked. However, it doesn't mean that it's not that. Chevrolet also stunned. Also, killing the Nighthawk, I believe. Or not. Yeah, 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 right, right, I remember that, I remember that. Got uh, a long range missile and a short range missile off on the Nighthawk, dealing 9 HE. And since I was diving the longbow, trying to dive it, um, I did not get the gunshots off on the Nighthawk, which means the Nighthawk gets out alive. The longbow gets out alive because the KWS fails at the diving the long longbow properly and only got like one short range missile off on that. I think mainly because it was shooting the first one at the Nighthawk and so it had to reload and only got one off because, because of that. So both get out alive and the KWS dies to the Panic Patriot. Oh no, it actually died to Stinger here. Okay, good to know. In any case, the KWS died. The longbow got out alive. The Nighthawk got out alive. Yeah, not not great at all. But at least I'm still taking. I'm still in a decent position in mid. As you can also see, with, this is also a nice indicator sometimes. Um, depending on what you use the MLRS for, but and the Crotal also fails. Getting the longbow. Um, hang on. Where's the where's the situation? Um, come on, yeah, um, especially on heavy MLR system, the XP can often be an indicator on how much your MLR is killed. It does only two bars, so it most likely didn't even kill anything, and if it killed something, maybe the rifleman's code or a couple of M113s. Of course, it depends on what you use it for. If you use it before an assault to stun opponents then it or enemies, then it doesn't matter what it killed, because it's supposed to stun, but, um, it's pretty much a guarantee for me now that I didn't really kill anything valuable with it, which so far has been the main reason. Um, try to kill the Chaparral very early, try to kill the Chaparral here again. As you can see, it's panic, try to kill the Patriot. Should have used full salvos most likely, but yeah. Trying to resupply, always trying to resupply the Crotals, of course. And the Crotals give me a nice little window of um, safety against the longbow. Yep, trying to move up by the Crotal. The Crotal on the left side has done so much work. It's already on a lead, killed like five um, little birds, killed like two or three dabs, damaged some planes. I think it may have even finished off a plane, one of the Harriers. At the very least, it damaged one, two, down to one HP. That's always good. Oh, now it's... Ah, oh, that is so annoying on the left now. As you can see, the longbow coming very, very close here. And you will see that I'm so close to getting the missiles off on the longbow. I'm like... I'm, at first I was like, okay, let's not move up. I'm in cover. Uh, then I decide, alright, he's out of the window. Let's move up. I start aiming. <laughs> Can't... Get uh can't get uh, can't finish the aim. Ah, uh, so annoying. Didn't get one missile off on a longbow. Now now it's closing to me again, but I already told it to reverse. And then when I told the Krothal to stop again, it's already moving back again. It's so ah uh, so close yet so far. But I mean the longbow didn't kill much. It killed one MX10, of course, annoying, but didn't do any big damage. So that's more or less fine. He's motoring my Krothal. Doesn't really do much though. 
Rathman, so I buy a new MX-10. And he's second now, I believe. Yeah. Could have just moved one of the Panthers up to the left to kill that, but whatever. You know, he's trying to assault mid again, but... Yeah. I think nothing major, really. Or should I say, Major General? Haha. <laughs> Um, I think the only really notable thing is that he's attacking with his longbow. He doesn't really do much with his assault here. The Panthers just kill the rifleman. And longbow, I think, gets a bit too close. There's Raven again. I think he was trying to bait the missiles with the Raven, but doesn't doesn't work. Crotal, I think it one shot the longbow even. Just checking whether I killed a longbow. Yes, I did. Because I was thinking I was focusing on something else. And I believe that's pretty much it. Yeah. He surrenders. Any second now. Go, GG. Fairly close in kills. Lost both my super heavies. Especially the 205. It just did nothing. Um. Yeah, just going through the kills here. The clear at least killed like two M1 IPs. The Tiger start also did not a lot. Definitely have to watch out for Super Heavy Micro on these maps where I have to. Excuse me. Um, where I have to rely even more on smoke and less on forest cover. I have to work on my Tiger Micro. Um, sometimes it's seasoned, sometimes it's just. Not really good, especially like in this match, they didn't really do much. Um, I think sometimes I'm trying too hard to make the tiger work. Um, but yeah, not not the greatest performance of me in this match, but I think it was fairly interesting to watch. Had some nice scenes here and there, especially against US, which is not a deck you see very often nowadays in ranked. Um. I think you enjoyed this episode. Let me know how the mic quality was again. Testing around with the new mic I bought. And yeah. Let me know what you think of the series. Maybe it'll also try to do more quote unquote casting of my own replays. Try to do this kind of stuff from the replay perspective every now and then because then I can move around the camera freely and stuff like that. And yeah, I think that's it. Thank you very much for watching and I hopefully see you next time.